Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's brood. Mama and Papa Bloom, Sidney, Sally, and Yetta, have all been dining at the Fink home, because, of course, Yetta is engaged to be married to Harold Fink. Papa is mightily pleased, as he says to his hostess, <laughs> Well, Mrs. Fink, there's just one thing I've got to say, <laughs> and that is that this certainly is an elegant dinner. Well, I'm glad you think so. But it's just one of our ordinary meals. We eat like this every night. You do? Every night? With a man waiter? <laughs> Listen to Jake. Just as though he didn't know that fellow's a butler. But, Mama, I didn't know. Sure you did. They have them all the time in the movies. Only the one you've got, Mrs. Fink, never says anything funny. <gasps> Hodgins wouldn't dare to say anything funny. Hodgins? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Hodgins? Yeah, yeah. Who's Hodgins? <laughs> Hodgins? That's the butler's name. It's a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> Hodgins is an old family um, name. His father had it before him. Uh, it's a second-hand name. Huh? Mm, he's very good. His brother is a valley for an English duke. A valley? Yes, he dresses the duke. Is the duke a cripple? Oh, no. The duke is a very famous sportsman. He's one of England's foremost fox hunters. Uh, uh, excuse me, I didn't hear what you said. I said he's a great fox hunter. Who? Hodgins' brother? No, the duke. What does he want to hunt foxes for? Well, it's a very fashionable thing to do. Almost all gentlemen hunt foxes. Thank <laughs> I ignorant. I thought the only people who hunted foxes was furriers, and then they made cots out of them. Mm, Sidney would know all about that. If it's anything but the knee pants business, Sidney's on exploit. <laughs> yeah. Papa, very Sidney. Yeah. He'll be back in a minute. He and Sally and Yetta and Harold went down to the corner to get the morning paper. Why don't they wait until tomorrow morning if they want a morning paper? Because they don't want it, Mama. I want it. Then why couldn't you wait until tomorrow morning? Because I want to see the funny page. Because he wants to see the funny yeah. page. Yeah. Before they get back, Mrs. Fink, let's talk about what my Yetta and your Harold are going to do after the wedding, huh? Where they're going to live and who's going to pick the flat for them and get the furniture and things like that? Well, I thought for the first year or so, while they're getting started, Harold and Yetta could live right here. Live here? Say, that sounds like a swell idea. <laughs> sounds like the worst idea I ever heard. Why? The place is too small. Too small? Mama, have you looked around? How can you say a thing like Mrs. that? Mrs. Bloom. Call me Becky. All right, Becky. Well, then, I can't see why you say that. We have 16 rooms and five baths here. Just for Monroe and myself. And you know he's away most of the time. Right now, he's in California, and he won't be back until the day before the wedding. I still say it's too small. But, Mama, lots of married couples live in, in just one room. That's different, Pop. For two people, one room by themselves is plenty. But for two families, different families... If a house is 500 miles long and it's got 2,000 rooms with 3,000 baths, still it's too small. Mama, I've always loved you and I always will. I love every little thing about you, Mama. But sometimes you're talking foolish. Yeah, but this ain't one of the times. Right now I'm talking as good sense as though I was getting paid for it. All right, all right, Mama, I'll pretend I know what you mean. But tell me, why can't two families live in a house together and be happy? I don't know, Papa, they, they can't. But why not? Well, uh, uh, a house is like an automobile. Only one person can steer. Well, my whole idea was to take the worry of running a house off of Yetta's shoulders. Running a house is no worry, Mrs. Fink. Besides, 
all over the world, certain things is natural enemies, like dogs and cats, policemen and burglars, and wives and mother-in-law. Mm, I haven't found it that way. Mm -hmm. Your husband's mother, how you get along with her? Well, Monroe was an author. <laughs> no wonder you're talking. Well, Mama, sometimes relatives is nice things. Yes, <laughs> Papa, sometimes operations is nice things, but I don't have to go around and look for them. Monroe has a couple of cousins I don't like. Yeah, you see, night comes out. <laughs> You know, I sometimes believe that all relatives is mind readers. You're sitting home having a good time, and your relatives, 40 blocks away, they think, across the town is my cousin having a good time, so I'll go over and spoil it. So they show up. <laughs> if I was writing up the dictionary when it comes to the word relative, and I had to put down what it means, you know what I'd say? No, what? I would say, a relative is a person who hides until he needs something. And then he comes around. Well, some people have rich relatives. I wouldn't believe it. If somebody came to our house and they didn't want something, I wouldn't believe there was a relative. Relative, smell it, let it lie. I mean, lay. What's all this got to do with Yetta and Harold living here? Even if you wanted them to, they wouldn't do it. Well, maybe we could talk them into it, Mama. Jake, sure you could. When young people is in love, they're silly. Like a fellow on Saturday with his paycheck in his pocket, he can be talking to anything. I flatter myself that I'm different from other mothers-in-law. Yeah, I did the same thing, and I was wrong, too. <laughs> well, uh, shall we retire to the drawing room? <laughs> the dra well, what for? Papa, what for? Don't ask foolish questions. Somebody's going to draw pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mama. Yes. He's telling us who is Sydney and Sally. Sure, he's introducing me to my own daughter. <laughs> Hello, folks. Hello, Ma. Hello. Uh, here's Hello. your paper, Pa. Uh, thanks, Sydney. Uh, Harold and your vet told us to tell you they're going to take a little ride. Your vet said to leave the key under the mat. Hasn't she got a key of her own? I should say not. What would she need with a key? Well, suppose she's out late. When one of my daughters is out late, I stay up late. Oh, I've always believed in liberty for the younger generation. And so do I. The younger generation, they can have all the liberty they want to. They can smoke cigarettes, they can stay out late. That's fine. My daughters is different. They do as I tell them. And if you think she's kidding, Mrs. Fink, you're entirely wrong. I've been married over a month now, and last week she told me to do something. When I said no, she threatened to spank me. And I would have done it, too. Uh, no, you wouldn't, Mama. <laughs> After all, you've got to remember, now she is Sidney's wife. Yeah, she was my daughter before she was Sidney's wife. You can't spank a married woman, Mother. No, I can try. Oh, my, you're old-fashioned. <laughs> That's what I thought when my mother slapped my face. <laughs> After you were married? After I was married and had two children. <laughs> you know, Mama, sometimes I wonder what would have happened to me if I had slapped your face. Uh, it's lucky you never tried. Huh. Mine mother's my mother, but you're no relation. You're only my husband. Yeah. Well, a couple of times I've wanted to slap mm, your face, yeah. Mama. If I'd hit you every time I wanted to, you'd be red, black, and blue all no, over. No, 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 don't quarrel, please. Mrs. Fink, who's quarreling? I'm just telling Jack something, and he's listening. That's mm. no quarrel. Then he says something and expects me to listen. <laughs> That's a quarrel. <laughs> Now, uh, the real reason I wanted you to come over this evening, I thought we could discuss plans for the wedding. What kind of plans do you need? You pick out a day, you invite all the people you want, then you invite all the people you have to have, you get a lot of food, and that's the wedding. Well, there are other details, too. Ah, yeah, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> the other details come in bottles, but don't worry, Papa would have thought of that. Well, what do you want to waste time doing that tonight for? Oh, sure, let it go, Mom. I'm afraid we'll have to do it tonight. You see, we have to get a day far enough ahead. I'll have to see the caterer about the cuisine. I thought you saw the caterer about food. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Bloom. Well, no, Mrs. Fink. For my daughter's wedding, I supply the food. No stranger. But that's a lot of work. Yeah, of course, Mom, it was. <laughs> Don't you remember? You were tired for a week after Sally's wedding. Yeah, of course I was tired for a week. I'm going to be tired for a week after Yvette's wedding. I want to be tired. I enjoy it. Well, you certainly can't enjoy cooking. For my daughter's wedding, I can enjoy cooking. I can enjoy scrubbing the floor. And if somebody had to dance a dance, I could enjoy dancing a dance. Uh, we've popped over the location for the wedding, and we thought the Hotel Van Loring. Uh, the main ballroom would be just about right. It'll hold 600 comfortably. 600 people coming to the wedding? Oh, I imagine so. The list I made had 490 names. 499. That's a lot of presents. We only had 63 to Sally's wedding. 
62 presents and a cousin of Jake's. We thought we would have two orchestras. One to play the wedding march and the other for the dancing. Mrs. Fink, before I would pay for two orchestras, I would whistle the wedding march myself. And uh, speaking of presents, uh, several engagement presents arrived today. They did? What was they? Well, I don't know. I didn't open them. You didn't? <laughs> I'll bet you Becky couldn't do that. Papa, I never opened a single present of Sally's. Now, Ma, how can you say that? Because it's the truth. I only tore off the corner of the packages to see what was inside. Ah, uh-huh, Mama, one of them I know you opened. I had to, Papa. Sally wasn't home and I didn't want to die of curiosity. <laughs> Uh, another thing I think would be very good, uh, we could get some professional talent to entertain the guests after the ceremony. What are they going to do? Why, they're going to sing and dance. We don't need them. Papa will have two drinks and he'll do dances that ain't been invented yet. Mama, why do you say a thing because, like that? Because it's the truth. I tell you right now, wedding or no wedding, guests or no guests, if you get up and do the big orange, I'll go home. It's the big apple. The way Papa will do it, it'll be the big onion. I mean, my whole life, I, I never was drunk. Mm, maybe not, Papa, but at Sally's wedding, you certainly fooled everybody. I tell you, I was, uh, I was a sober, just like a judge. <laughs> when was the last time you saw a judge dancing a Kazatsky on the table? And a small table? <laughs> well, let's talk about something else. I wouldn't say another word. But, Jake, this is your last daughter's wedding. You're a businessman with a bald head and indigestion. Please, if you never do me another favor as long as you live, don't pretend you're an aeroplane and try to fly around the room. Mama, stop, stop. Well, then, I guess everything is settled. The hotel will be all right, and I'll take care of the bands, the food, and the wine for 600. That sounds all right to me. Me too. And I'll send Monroe a wire to California telling him we've decided on everything. Well, I, I don't think I'd do that if I were you. Why not? Oh, well, let's just wait. But why should we wait? Well, well there's no hurry. Sidney, what are you talking about? I, I'm not talking about anything. Sally, you tell me what Sidney's talking about. Well, how, how should I know, how Ma? Should you... Sidney. Yes, Ma? Don't be a smart Isaac. Tell me, come on. Well, tell you what? Tell me what you ain't going to tell me. Let him alone, Ma. I'll let him alone as soon as he tells me. This is no secret like a income tax. Okay. Sally, what time is it? Oh, it's two minutes after 11. They're on the 11 o'clock train for Greenwich. Sidney, who's on what train? Harold and Yetta, they left at 11. They left? What for? They've eloped. 